Hello and welcome to the TES Secondary Maths Resource of the Week number 4 for the 2016-2017 to season with me Craig Barton. Now I love this resource because I almost see this as a bit of a best of, the best of solving quadratic equations and the author himself admits that he's taken ideas from loads of different people to put this together but this is going to become my bible, my one stop shop when I want to teach solving quadratic equations to say years 9, 10 or 11 because it's a single powerpoint but that's doing it a bit of a disservice because there's actually 73 slides in this powerpoint and the author kind of underplays his role a little bit here because whilst he's compiled a load of different resources it's been put together in such a beautiful way so I'll take you through uh, just I'm not going to go through every single slide of these just take you through some of the highlights and just so you can see the structure and then we'll talk a little bit about how to use this in the classroom so firstly it starts off with uh, looking a bit of a recap looking at uh, plotting quadratic equations from a table of values and talks about solving them and then we move into solving quadratics by factorizing now what I like about this is look how clearly things are laid out so we get some nice little work solutions that are nicely animated then we get a uh, nine questions for students to, to have a go at just project that up on the board and then if you're anything like me you'll be praying that the next slide has the answers to these well lo and behold there it are there they are so you can just project that up on the board as well then we have perfect squares uh, or difference of two squares again nine questions and uh, nine questions with the answers and I love this because look at some of these solutions you get your um, your kind of difference of two squares there you get single solutions with perfect squares you get some third solutions so we can have a little chat about that and we get a no solution perfect we could even fire up a bit of Desmos to have a look what those different sets of solutions look like on a graph lovely stuff then we get the kind of next level up where rearrangements required and we get answers to that and then this is what I love so this is the, the is, uh, I'm going to go off on one here but I make no apologies for this I, I've been recording my Mr. Bart Maths podcast and um, hopefully you, you, you've heard of it look it up if you haven't um, and I speak to teachers on there about how they plan the lessons and the thing that comes through to me the most is the simplest lesson structure is the most effective and that lesson structure is let's have some work solutions and jot down a couple of notes or some instructions then let's have lots of practice until we get really good at it and then let's try and use our skills that we've learned that we've hopefully become fluent in or mastered if you want to use that that lingo to see if we can apply them in different contexts so this is exactly how this lesson set up because then we get some interesting context for the skills that we've just learned some rich context for trying out the factorizing and solving so it's such a simple lesson structure but for me it's the most effective and look at these every single one has beautifully worked solutions so it just runs itself so that's all about factorizing and then we relate it back to the graph. Now we go on to completing the square and it's the same thing. Look at this. We get nice, simple worked uh, examples for the students to copy down um, and kind of work together through on the board. Then we get things for them to try. And again, look, we get a nice no solution one question six there. Why is that not got a solution? What would that look like on the graph and so on? Then we get fractional solutions so the next level up. Then we get third solutions for the next level up from that. And then we get division need at the start. I mean, could you need any more when it comes to completing the square there? And as I'm saying, get this related to the graph because that's new spec GCSE now, figuring out turning points from completing the square form. <clears throat> and now we get our richness. Can you find a direct way of finding these answers which links our completing the square to the quadratic formula which brings us to our net our third way of solving these and again it's just lovely beautifully laid out now i don't know about you but i find quadratic formula a bit of a nightmare to come up with questions because it's easy enough coming up with a question but then you've got to work out the flipping answer yourself but not with these loads of different um, examples um, to to go with and I'll look at that explain why your calculator doesn't like the quadratic equation so it's not just that there's examples here there's richness to this as well and then again we're always relating it back to the graph then we're deriving the quadratic formula and so on and then it just goes on and on and on we get into year 11 and that takes it up to a new level we get trickier factorizing we get trickier formula we get trickier completing the square and it all boils down, oh look at this one, flipping heck, I can't, can't let it go without doing this. Find the six solutions to these equations. What would equation, what would question three be? So real richness there, combining skills together, beautiful stuff. 
And it all boils down, This, as I say, this is the year 11 and we get all factorizing with different uh, coefficients of x squared and loads of context and a nice bit of probability, a bit like the Hannah Sweet example and so on. And if I just go to the bottom here, because I love this to finish, bringing all our skills together, bang a quadratic uh, on the board, and can students use all those, I think the seven different skills there, can they do all that with those quadratics? And again, always relating it back to Desmos and so on. So there it is, the absolute Bible of quadratic equations, but how would you use it in the lesson? Now, you're probably not going to go through all 73 slides um, in one go, and you're probably not going to want to use them all exactly in the way that they're written, and that's what I've always said about resources on TES, they're not designed designed to be used exactly as they are written because they've been written by a specific teacher for a specific class for a specific purpose. But there you've got 73 slides that you can take out, modify, insert into your own lessons and so on. And keep doing what I do, dip back into these. Every time you need to quickly revise something, you've got a slide there that's ready for it. So anything quadratic related that you're going to do with years 9, 10 or 11, there's probably a slide about it within this 73 uh, epic slide epic presentation so a wonderful 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 resource with tons and tons and tons of stuff going for it so there it is i hope you found that useful that's by dan walker one of my one of my favorite uh, resource authors and look up his other stuff um on the related resources some absolutely fantastic stuff uh, going on there so there it is and i shall return with a fresh resource of the week next week take care and bye for now